This conference will now be recorded. So good morning, welcome to the December 17th, 2020 meeting of the Lafayette Redevelopment Commission. Uh, we have a quorum of commissioners present and we're able to start this meeting. Reminder that uh, for the commissioners, all of our votes will be by roll call. Thank you so much, Cindy Mary, for assisting us with that task. We really appreciate it. And of course, remind me if I get out of line to remember to do that. Um, we have what Dennis has described as a relatively light agenda today. Uh, we'll see if that holds true. And the first order of business is to approve the minutes of the November 19th, uh, 2020 meeting. I am sure the commissioners have had a chance to read those minutes. I move to approve. Yeah, go ahead. I think there's a motion to approve by uh, Jim Terry that's on the floor. TJ sounded like you were there in the background. I don't see you yet, but you're somewhere, right? Yeah, I'm here. I second that. Fantastic. Thank you. So there is a motion and uh, a second on the floor. Is there any further discussion of the minutes from the November 17th, November, November 19th meeting? Hearing none, we'll have a roll call vote. Uh, Please go ahead, Cindy. Jim, Terry, is that a. Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. TJ? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Josh? Aye. Is is Don Teeter on? No. no. Okay. Not that we know of. Okay. All right. Minutes approved, four to zero. Thank you, Cindy. Um, so continuing on with our next item of business, uh, I think we have a change order uh, related to the streetscape activity. Mr. Carson, you want to make some comments? Did you want to do the meeting dates first? Oh, I apologize. Thanks for whoever's keeping me on in line. Um, we do have the 2021 Redevelopment Commission meeting dates. A uh, list of those dates were included in your packet uh, with notations for just a couple of changes based on the late winter holidays. And um, so we normally take a motion to approve these meeting dates. Is there any discussion any about any the discussion? dates? I motion to approve the meeting dates for 2021. Thank second. you. TJ. Second. Thank you, Shelly. So is it moved and properly second? Any further discussion? Fantastic. We'll do a roll call vote. Terry? Aye. Dean? Aye. Henry Ott? Aye. Holman. Aye. Calendar dates um, have passed for 2021. Thank you so much. And I apologize for trying to skip straight to this streetscape, streetscape uh, phase six change order. Now, Mr. Carson, if you would please. Sure, we have a very minor change here for the streetscape phase six and John Munn on, from T-Bird is on the line and he can explain this change order. So John, I'll let you do that. Okay, good morning, everybody. So this change order is actually probably the kind we like to see the most. This is actually a reduction of the contract uh, in relationship to the exterior entryway of the county building. Originally in the contract, it was uh, spelled out that Milestone would remove that concrete and then reinstall it. During construction, we realized that that uh, entryway was over the basement of the building. Uh, we decided demo of that was not not a not a good idea so after discussions with the redevelopment office and um, milestone and the county officials it was determined that we would eliminate that piece of the contract from milestones contract which amounts to five thousand and thirty dollars so prior to change order five the contract amount uh was one million two hundred eighty-two thousand five hundred and fifty-four dollars and fifteen cents. Uh, with the uh, eliminating this from the contract, the current contract price is one million two hundred seventy-seven thousand five hundred twenty-four and fifteen cents. I don't know if anyone has any questions uh, in relationship to this change order. I have a couple of questions. They're probably more so for Dennis than for you, uh, John. Um, in terms of, of the change, so Hamilton Creative Concrete, 
they still will need to do the work and will that cost be similar to um, the current cost that we're eliminating? Yeah, Hamilton's um, probably going to perform that and it'll probably be about the same price. I mean, originally it was, you know, part of our project, like John Munn had said, but uh, and it was going to be reimbursed by the county in, in, in regardless. So now it's just that since we're done with the project and we're, but we have, we weren't able to finish that part of it, rather than hold up Milestone um, and us on the on this um, part of the project, it's better just to go ahead and take it off and just let the county finish it out. Which would lead to my second question I already answered. That means the county will pay for this. Yeah, yeah. Yes, those are my two questions. Thank you. Yeah, that was the whole intention from the beginning, but it just makes sense now from a logistics and timing standpoint just to take it out, formally take it out of our contract. Sure, thank you. Are there other questions related to this particular topic, this change order? Hearing none, is there a motion on the floor? So moved. Second. Thank you. It's been moved by TJ and seconded by uh, Jim Terry. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Cindy, I think you're muted. I was. Um, Jim? Aye. Dean? Aye. Henry Ott? Shelly? Aye. Okay. And Josh? Aye. Change order passes, four to zero. Thank you. So thank you, Mr. Munn, for your participation in the meeting and updating us on that change order. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, so continuing on, uh, the next item of business is resolution LRC 2020-17 uh, as we amend um, the, the consolidated Creasy Central uh, TIF plan again. So Mr. Carson, additional background you want to provide for us? Sure. Um, as you know, there's a, a lot of exciting projects happening downtown and they continue to, to come to us. And we've got another exciting mixed use project um, downtown on tap. Um, Andy Gutwein is on the line here. Um, he's going to be the developer and it'll be located at 631 Main Street, which is right across from the Lafayette Brewing Company. And we also have our bond counsel, Lisa Lee from Ice Miller, that will explain the resolution. Um, I'm going to first turn it over to Andy so he can act, present the project to us and then we can see if you have any questions about the project itself and then we'll let Lisa explain the process um, here with this particular resolution and, and, and what we may be looking at with a, a possible bond to support it. So first I'm going to make Andy the presenter here. Okay, you should be able to be the presenter now, Andy. Okay. So, Andy, your audio is not very good. I don't know if I do. Yeah, your audio is breaking up. Oh, I think I can do perfect. Okay. I do this. Uh, is my audio any better now? Yeah, no, your audio is still breaking up a lot. Let me. Is this better? That's better. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, yeah. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the introduction. And I I hope I don't speak too much, or I hope I cover what you guys want to hear. But I wanted to, uh, as Dennis uh, indicated, share a little background on the project, uh, 631 Main. 
So as, um, let me see here. I think I, yeah, nope. As Dennis indicated, um, uh, we have uh, this, I wanna make sure everybody is aware of where the project's located. You can see the purple box uh, located directly across from Lafayette Brewing Company, uh, the largest and maybe the only actually gap along Main Street between, um, between the river and certainly up to Ninth Street. Um, if you look back uh, several years, you can see that the block was, uh, was, uh, was certainly full at one time. The, uh, this is the, on the left, you see the Lafayette Theater. To the right, where the Kittles sign is, that's uh, the Kathy's Candies building. Um, and so everything there to the left has been, uh, has been uh, taken down. Was, uh, this was a picture of the uh, Luna Theater, which was uh, one of the prominent buildings on that area that's been just demolished. Um, so since 1970, there's been a gap there. Um, and since uh, 1995, when I started working downtown, um, I've heard about the need for continuous storefronts and 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 this and you know the gap uh, here between Upper and Lower Main. So Valley Oaks has always needed that parking lot, and uh, but now they're ready to relocate. So the time uh, has arrived to redevelop this. So we're going uh, to name the building the Luna. Um, and why the Luna? We want to pay homage homage to the uh, the Luna Theater. Um, Luna is the Earth's moon. Luna in Latin. It's a goddess, the ancient Roman personification of the moon. Uh, so we want to just play that history up a little bit, um, the history of this, of this uh, great downtown site. Some of the particular challenges for this site I wanted to mention, um, in the rear of the building um, is the, uh, the, the rear of the property here actually is the access for the Long Center. And the Long Center- need I'm fine, I'm just on a Zoom thing, so I was trying to be quiet. Oh. The um, the the um, so we need to maintain access to the back of the long center for semis, tour buses, and box trucks. Um, we also have a utility relocation uh, uh, utility lines uh, overhead utility lines in the back that are going to improve the access to the long center. Uh, we have have to coordinate utilities uh, that are related to the Pearl River relocation, uh, which is a great project the city's um, wrapping up. Uh, we have compliance with historic commission requirements. Uh, they're stringent, but we really wouldn't want to build something that didn't fit anyway. So we're happy to do that. Uh, and then parking, of course, uh, and the you know the premium of space in a downtown area. Uh, we we do need to go with an underground parking uh, in order to accommodate uh, the number of units needed for this. Uh, we have, of course, general challenges. Uh, COVID. What else do I need to say? And then construction costs uh, are at historic highs. But we believe we've pulled it together. This is a rendering of the building from that same uh, vantage point with the Lafayette Theater on your left um, that you can't really see. Um, same vantage point of the photograph taken earlier. You can see the Kathy's Candies building, and then you can see um, our proposed uh, new construction project there. Um, I've got one rendering from the other direction as well. You can see the Frontier phone uh, building, um, and then Kathy's Candies uh, on beyond the building. Um, the building's uh, planned to be 98 units, four studios, 51 one beds, 43 two beds, um, 112 parking spaces, 68 of those will be below grade. Um, the retail space on Main Street um, will have the part of the ground floor will be the lobby to the apartments but the but the, in addition to that there'll be about 10,000 square feet of uh, retail space available we're expecting between three and five tenants for that space um, so we'll be looking for restaurants coffee shops and other traditional users um, i think everyone would love to see a small grocery store but um, that may be a dream we haven't pursued retail leads at this point but but now that the project's becoming a reality we will begin doing that we're, we're planning to do an upscale but with some uh, classic but yet modern finishes. We'll have a ho hotel style uh, mail and lobby lounge right off of Main Street. Um, the bike room will give people secure bike storage, an elevator lobby on each floor. You won't just be walking off the elevator into the hallway. You'll have a, a little lobby area. 
um, you have a fitness room, uh, a rooftop area for dog walking, uh, and then a rooftop patio on the top of the building up on the, the penthouse level. Um, and all the parking that, you know, not only the ground level, but the, not only the underground parking, but the ground level parking will all be covered as well. And we'll have QOS entry for the units. Uh, the primary market we're looking to reach is young professionals and, and empty nesters. So uh, each end of that spectrum. This is, uh, these are the elevations of the building from different uh, angles. The upper left is looking, uh, looking from Columbia Street from the uh, east to the west. So you can see Frontier Building. You can see the long, the back of the long center there. Uh, to the upper right, um, we'll be looking um, again from Columbia Street-ish. Um, from the west looking east, and uh, you can see the Long Center there and Kathy's Candies-ish building. Um, down below, lower left is from the Main Street views um, and lower right from the other angle. You can see the rooftop patio uh, and trying to think of one of these. The upper right also shows the location of the green roof patio for the, the dog walking area I was mentioning. These are just the floor plans of each uh, of each level. I won't spend a lot of time on these. This is the lower level parking. Um, this is the ground floor. So this is where you'd have the apartment lobby in the um, upper left here off of Main Street. This is the bike storage. It's uh, directly accessible here to the back of the building. These are future tenant spaces. Um, we There's a elevation change along Main Street in this area. So we do have some steps in the building. So these lines indicate whether the building, the foundation will be stepped. Um, more parking, of course. Um, this is uh, one of the, this would be the uh, second floor level with the the uh, patio here for dog walking area. This is the fitness area. Um, and then these units obviously will face Main Street uh, and then a couple of corridors with units uh, facing east and west, um, and some facing uh, south as well. Um, I do would note that this is the, I don't know if anybody can see my pointer, my arrow, but um, the long center at the bottom of the building, the, the outline is the long center, and the, there is no building uh, over the rear portion of the parking in this area so that semis um, and tour buses, et cetera, can access and drive under the building. Um, because on when you get to the third floor, you'll see this corridor goes further. And so, um, again, this is the long center, the outline here at the bottom, and uh, the units go further, but they'll be uh, up at the third floor level, so there'll be plenty of clearance. Uh, this is the rooftop. You can see the rooftop patio here uh, overlooking Main Street, as well as looking to the west. Um, this is a feature focus uh, or a color rendering, I guess, of the, of the rooftop feature, um, some pergola areas to get some shade and then some, some, um, uh, uh, some yeah, some patio and green areas for, uh, for people enjoyment. Uh, this is a, just a real quick rendering of the interior finishes. We'll have a, we're going with a, a little different um, cabinet finish and some, uh, this is a, it's a vinyl plank flooring, but it's, um, a little bit more classical, but yet something a little bit more unusual. We've got some uh, ceramic tile in the bathrooms that'll be um, trendy, yet uh, also kind of gives you that classic uh, feel as well. So that's all I have. Happy to answer any questions that anybody has. Thank you, Andy. Are, are there questions from the commissioners? Andy, I might have missed this. Josh, if I could just make a quick uh, comment at this point, if the commissioners don't have any questions, just uh, before Lisa gets started there, just I want to I want to thank Andy. Uh, that as as he said in that uh, presentation, since 1970, uh, you know that gap has, has existed, and I can tell you in the 17th year I've been here, we've talked about that continually how do we activate that space and how do we make that space really contribute uh to downtown in a significant way and and uh andy and his team has done a good job putting this uh together uh, i was on the calls some of the calls with historic preservation folks getting this where 
uh, people could agree and, and really do something special with that with that block. So uh, Andy's been involved with downtown, as he said, since 1995. He's committed uh, to downtown and some other projects. And so uh, we'd certainly appreciate the uh, the commission's support of this one. And with that, if nobody had any questions, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Lisa Lee to uh, the bond council to talk to you a little bit about this particular resolution here. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mayor. You, Mayor. Uh, Lisa, before you start, please. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, Andy, I, I wanted to ask, I'm not sure, maybe I missed this. I didn't hear anything about the timeline. Oh, that's a that's a fair question, Josh. I, I don't think I mentioned anything about the timeline. We would uh, we'd like to get started um, early, early in this uh, coming year, 2021, um, with um, anticipated uh, occupancy in the middle of 2022. So it's about an 18 month um, build process. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, um, hearing all the questions, as, as the mayor said, we'll turn it over to Lisa Lee. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Uh, my name is Lisa Lee. I'm with Ice Miller. Uh, I'm in our municipal finance practice, and I'm sitting in today for my uh, partner, Heather James, who I think you've been working with uh, more recently. Resolution LRC 2020-17 is what we call an amending declaratory resolution, and there are a lot of pages here, but that's because this area has been extremely active, so you've you've done uh, amendments multiple times to your economic development plan. You may recall that uh, if a project is not in your plan, you're not allowed to use it to use TIF for it uh, by statute. So um, if it's not one of the broader uh, projects in your plan, then typically you need to go through this this amendment process uh, to add that project so that you are authorized to use uh, TIF on that type of project. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So your, your first few pages, your, your whereas clauses, we call them the recitals. They kind of tell the story as this area. Uh, it was originally, you had two different areas originally created and they've been consolidated and enlarged. And then uh, you've had this consolidated plan pretty much updated each year since 2013. And this is another update uh, in 2020 to add the mixed use project uh, that Mr. Gutwein was, was talking about, which is a very exciting project. Anytime you can fill gaps in a downtown area, um, that's that's exciting for a lot of people. So I, I commend you for that. Uh, the Really the only action that this resolution does take is to amend the project, amend the plan to add this project. And then uh, at the end, you'll see that your entire economic development plan uh, for this area, and it breaks out the both the private projects uh, that are taking place or uh, expected to take place in this area and the pub more public projects uh, that you want to have in your plan so that you're able to do those down the road. Uh, this is the first step in the amendment process. Uh, since a legislative change numerous years ago, Dennis, I don't know, is it 10 years ago maybe? Um, used to, if you were only adding a project to your plan, uh, you only had to provide notice of a hearing and then this body held a public hearing and added the project to your plan. But um, a number of years ago, the legislature decided that any amendment, whether you're enlarging an, an allocation area or just adding a project, uh, any amendment needed to go through the entire process. So uh, after today, if you decide to approve this resolution, this will go to the plan commission. Uh, the role of the plan commission is to say whether or not they believe this conforms to the comprehensive plan for the city. It will then go to the common council to agree or disagree with the plan commission. And then uh, you will have notice of a public hearing of this body. Uh, one thing you don't have to do this time that you have to do when you're dealing with changes to your area, there is no tax impact statement that has to be uh, put together by your municipal advisors and sent to all the taxing units because you're not impacting uh, the assessed value from a an action perspective. Obviously, this this project would add assessed value, but your amendment to the plan is not impacting assessed value uh, directly. So then this body would hold a public hearing. This is currently scheduled uh, looking for your February 25th 
uh, regular meeting. So there would be a notice published at least 10 days prior to that. And then you will hold a public hearing on this document. <clears throat> and you can take three different actions. You can either confirm the action you took today uh, with no changes. You can modify and confirm it. So if between now and I would say the notice of public hearing, uh, you think of other projects that maybe you should have added or have changes to the, the description of this project, you could do that at that time. Um, so that's a modification and confirmation, or you can rescind this resolution. So this is only the beginning and is, is no means uh, the final say on amending your plan. Uh, you also have in your uh, timetable, uh, you, it looks like you're going to be considering Economic Development Commission bonds. Uh, those are bonds that get issued, they get a recommendation from your Economic Development Commission, and then they go to the Common Council to decide whether or not to actually adopt that bond ordinance and issue those bonds. And the role of this body in that type of financing where you're not the actual issuer of the bonds as you would be in, in some public projects that you might do uh, for your economic development areas, you would be have the role of pledging the TIF to the repayment of those bonds issued by the city. And so uh, when Mr. Gutwein was talking about the schedule and uh, you know spring early 2021, uh, the current timetable is looking towards a bond closing closing in March. And so um, under this process, you're able to actually provide bond proceeds to the private entity uh, so that, and it's not subject to public bidding. So they actually control the timing. Uh, they can work that timing in with their, their overall development and that, see, that works better uh, under those circumstances. So at your February 25th, assuming that is gonna be your regularly scheduled meeting, you would not only be asked to hold the public hearing on this amendment, but also to consider adoption of the TIF pledge resolution uh, to the repayment of those bonds. So uh, those are the actions that, that will have to be taken. And I'm happy to answer any questions on the resolution. Again, it is it has an awful lot of information in it, but when you drill down, and I think that's because Dennis, I think you've always preferred to have uh, your economic development plan all in one place, updated all together, as opposed to uh, just in pieces and different resolutions, uh, which is a good practice to have. But when you drill down, the only action you're taking today is adding this mixed use project uh, to your economic development plan, so. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Lee. Are there uh, questions from the commissioners regarding anything that's been discussed thus far? I guess, if I might, I have one question. Um, it, it identifies total project costs at approximately $20 million. I'm curious if we've yet estimated what, what our contribution by bond is looking to be. Yes, we, we are looking at that. Um, our financial advisor, Baker Tilly, is helping out with that. And we are looking at um, a, a bond that would be um, no more than 90% of the increment generated from the project. So I don't have those numbers, exact numbers in front of me, but we're, we're looking not to go over 90% of the, the increment that would be generated. Okay. Yet to be determined then, huh? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, probably at the next meeting, we'll probably start getting into more of that detail. Thanks, Dave, um, for that question. I appreciate that. Um, and, and Dave mentioned the 20 million, but I think by way of the um, declaratory amendment or all of that formal language, I know what I'm saying, it only says 16 million at the end. So which one of those numbers? Yeah, that's probably my fault. Um, I was looking at some earlier um, information and it and said 16 million, but it's actually 20 million. It is the 20, okay, which is okay. Sure, sure, sure. All right, fantastic. Um, any other questions, comments about this activity? So may uh, I say, one, oh, go ahead. One, one more question perhaps for Andy, and I, I should probably know this from reading the documents, and but I'm not informed adequately. I assume these are units are for sale and not for rent. Is that fair to say, or is this? 
No, no, that's at, these are actually these are apartments. These are rental apartments. Rental okay. units. Yeah. Okay. Apartments. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, if I might make a suggestion, um, with with respect to the 16 million on the last page, number 55, yes. um, if you would, if, if in the motion to, if, if you're taking a motion to adopt, I would probably ask that you, uh, the motion also amend that 16 million uh, to match the 20 million, and then we can just make that change and replace that page for you so that those numbers actually match. Dennis, is that, would that be okay with you? Yeah, that'd be good. Thank you. Okay. Yes, uh, Miss Lee, I understand your 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 advice to us as counsel and, and Dennis, and I'm sure Mr. Mayor going along with that. So we'll see uh, how we make this motion in terms of make sure, Jackie, that we get that wording exactly the way you want it and we need it to be, everybody who's involved. Um, so I was going to make a comment, which, you know, might put me on the bad side of some of you guys, but, um, you know, the Pearl River is mentioned. So Andy and Mr. Mayor and everybody, this Pearl River and running under the city. So whatever's happening with the underground parking and the Pearl River and all that, we don't expect any, how shall I say, any unintended consequences <laughs> related to the Pearl River activity. Because I know sometimes when the library is talking about things, the Pearl River comes up as well. Mr. Mayor, I saw you unmute. You had a comment? Yeah. Yes, thank you, Josh. Uh, as you probably may or may not recall, uh, for the past year, uh, we have actually been working on relocating the Pearl uh, River uh, underneath downtown, uh, a pretty massive project, relocating a, a substantial system that's over 100 years old. But that was one of the reasons in the past that this lot could not be adequately um, developed because of the Pearl River. And with the upcoming uh, new uh, public safety bill that the city is building along with the new parking garage, we also needed to uh, facilitate relocation of, of parts of that sewer uh, to make that project uh, able to work also within the confines of the space that we have. And so uh, those sections of the Pearl River have been relocated. They are, they are now uh, around that area. And so there should not be uh, any, there is, and Andy, I don't recall exactly where we left this. Uh, there is some lines that will need to be uh, filled, um, that some pipes that are there that will either need to be filled or removed, and I'm not sure exactly where we've left those uh, discussions um, that will have to be taken care of. But from the Pearl River itself, uh, Mr. Holman, it has actually been relocated out of that area and out of the area of our new police station and uh, parking garage project. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, any further discussion on this activity? If not, we would entertain a motion related to LRC 2020 17. Motion to approve LRC 2020-17 with the uh, amended 16 million to 20 million. Second. Second. Thank you, uh, in, uh, TJ and Shelley. So Michelle, pick, pick. Uh, I saw uh, Jackie nodding her head. Sounds like that motion is acceptable uh, in terms of it will cover what we need it to. Yes, it will. Fantastic. Thanks, Jim. So any further discussion on LRC 2020-17? If not, we'll take a roll call vote. Terry? Terry? Aye. Dean? Aye. Henriot? Aye. Allman? Aye. Resolution passes with the um, amendments. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, good luck to you, Mr. Goodwine. Thanks for being on the call today. We appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Sure. Yes, you're welcome. And thanks, Lisa, as well, for uh, your sharing of information related to our responsibility as the commission uh, as it comes to this resolution and this entire activity. Dennis, anything else on that or shall we keep moving? We can keep moving. Fantastic. Then you're on, Mr. Carson, the director's report. Sure. Um, we held our, our first public meeting last night for the public safety building and parking garage, and it was very successful. 
Uh, we did it totally virtually, so it was a, a little bit of a complicated process and such, but it went off very well. So we're really excited about getting that information out to the public. We'll have some more touch points along the way and such, but I think, as you know, we um, are shooting towards starting construction in March on that project. I've um, also been working a lot with um, downtown uh, merchants and other businesses and things. As you know, that COVID-19 has really um, affected a lot of people, particularly restaurants and things. So I've been working with them on promoting different ways that, that they can promote their own business and um, pivot in this, in this time, particularly with um, gift cards and other promotions and things like that and other things that they can do um, to make sure that they keep themselves safe and their patrons safe as well too. And then lastly, again, with the 631 Main Street project, we're really excited about that. It was, again, a, a lot of interest in downtown, as you know, a lot of new projects coming along. Um, the um, Nova Tower project's coming along really good on South 4th Street. I don't know if you've been by there recently, but they're starting to put the exterior materials on that, so it's really looking nice. And then the Ellsworth project over on the region's um, bank lot. Um, um, Shelby Bowen with Rebars is uh, getting his permits to actually start on that project as well, too. He had to first do a, a, an additional parking lot there for Regions Bank, and that's been finished up. So now we'll actually start on the building here soon. So um, with that, I just wish everybody happy holidays. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, any questions for the director's report? Josh, yes. Comment if I could. I'm not sure if this is the best time, but I'm. Uh, could I make a quick comment, please? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, uh, we had planned today to formally, the best we could. I was going to hold up a plaque. Uh, we had made Don Teeter uh, for his service to the Redevelopment Commission, and unfortunately, he wasn't able to be with us today. But I feel I would be remiss even without him here if I did not publicly into this body thank Don for his uh, years of service. You know, he's been with us the entire uh, 17 years that I've been in, in office and has been part of uh, many, many projects as many of you have. And Don has been a great member. Uh, he's, he's attendance record is very good. He checks on projects. He asks good questions. Uh, he really knows the community and, uh, uh, we certainly deeply appreciate uh, his commitment to Lafayette, to the Redevelopment uh, Commission, and his uh, years of service. So I wanted to go ahead and publicly thank him today. We'll we'll get that uh, plaque to him, uh, but certainly wanted to publicly thank Don for his service and um, wish him well. And as he moves into that next phase of retirement, absolutely. Thank you so much for your comments, and he will be missed as a commission member. Uh, enjoyed working with him. I did myself, and I would dare say all of us did. Um, so we thank you for your comments, and, and we'll include some of those comments in the in the minutes uh, so that it's it's reflected there. Um, anything else related to the director's report? If not, we can move to the claims, the December claims. They were presented to us as commissioners. Are there any questions? I move to uh, approve the December claims of $1,590,434.26 for the December claims of $1,590,434.26. Second. I, I, I saw Shelly. Uh, second, first, <laughs> but she wasn't on mute yet. <laughs> We're going to give this one to her, Jim. <laughs> um, okay, all right. Uh, so thank you, uh, TJ, for moving and Shelly for second, uh, providing a second. Any any discussion, comments about the claims? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Terry? Aye. Dean? Aye. Henriot? Aye. Almond. Aye. Claims approved. Thank you. Thanks, Cindy. So um, with that, we have one last uh, item on the agenda in terms of public comment. Uh, are we aware of any public comment needing to come before the Redevelopment Commission today? I, my office received none. Thank you, Cindy. 
So we'll take that there's no public comment. Uh, if there is nothing else, we would uh, be able to adjourn this meeting. We want to encourage everyone to celebrate and enjoy the holidays in your way that's special for you. Be safe, and we'd hope to see everyone next January in terms of the next meeting. Is there a motion to adjourn? So move. So move. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, roll call vote. Terry. Aye. Dean. Aye. Aye. Hey, Hi, Allman. Hi. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all so much. Be safe. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Holidays. Yeah, happy holidays. Happy holidays, everybody.